Okay, sorry. Ricky, it's not to you, buddy. Sorry, I clapped. I think it was because I said hello. He thought someone was at the door. Um, well, we had a little, like, time away from each other. We got busy. We have other lives. We now. were really, really busy people. And you know what? Like, a good distance is healthy, is what they say. It was also the international break. So... Naturally, we took an international we break. We also took our own international break in our own homes and did not go anywhere. Yeah. Perfect. But I was... Perfect. Um, but league games resume game three of the season. Everything's coming back this weekend, Friday, actually, which is exciting. We get to spread it out a little bit, a little more extended fun. Um, we also now are two games in into being able to like analyze every team. We also got a little U S women's national team action. Um, but I'm going to start us off in a different direction because I think, you know, we said we were going to dive into the, to the hard stuff here, the good stuff, everything in between. Right. And two kind of hot topics happened in these past couple of weeks. One being um, a draftee of Kansas City's mom took to Twitter to express her displeasure with her daughter's experience at the Kansas City preseason. And I think we obviously both had like our own experiences going through the draft. Um, And I think this is tough, right? Like this is like a a really difficult one because I think Kansas city is doing a lot of really good things, you know, and they're mm. clearly investing a lot and they're signing players and, and they're doing all of these things, but it's like, kind of like this other thing sort of slips through the crap crack. Wow. Can we edit? Look, it quacks. <laughs> Put a quack. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you see Ricky <laughs> over my shoulder? Yeah, I was watching him. He was just like, Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah well this other thing slipped like slipped through the crack and it's like not okay and it should be called out and like the PA should take action and the NWSL should be held accountable and they should take action to ensure that this doesn't happen to any other athletes and I think you know the time of the league and I'll I'll you know dive in here myself as a former second to last fourth round draft pick <laughs> in the same year we both got drafted in the same year um where we both found out on Twitter, correct. I was driving to work in my car, not thinking I was going to get drafted. Um, I was driving to work in my car, and I actually did not have anybody from the team contact me for almost 24 hours. But, like, it kind of fit that year. I know that's, like, no excuse. And, like, if you're like, hey, you're like, yo, 2013 in the league was crazy. Wild. Wild. Honestly, 2013 to 2017, wild. It's like awesome because there was no rules and there was no rule book coming from the NCAAs where it's like everything at Michigan and at Penn State was so structured, right? We knew we were coming here when. We knew when yes. to pick up our gear. We knew everything like that. When you go pro, all of that, we are on their time. We're on company time oh. now. And it's a business. And I think people – who come from high division ones or any division one or any college yeah. soccer program really struggle with that transition of being the most important you're sport. At a time, yeah. At, at, your at your school has year. more money even now than most NWSL programs. Exactly. I think that the good thing is now is the standard though is like probably what I experienced. And again, I don't know, you know, you, you have your own draft story, but like, I know what I experienced would not fly now. Like if I was like, hey, nobody contacted me for 24 hours. I think people would be like, what the hell? Red flag. Red flag. Yeah. Huge red flag. And so the fact that, again, someone had a really poor experience, like now that is not okay. So again, yes. Does change need to happen? Yes. Does Kansas City need to like hold their hand up and take accountability and like put people and processes in place to ensure that never happens again? Absolutely. But yeah. you actually believe that the entities like the PA and the new commissioner, um, that you're like, okay, we do actually believe now that like real meetings are happening and people like will be held accountable. And like, again, it, it probably really is just like, we were not staffed well enough. And this, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think there's a level of human decency that everybody just like probably could use a quick refresher on. Don't get me wrong. But like, 
the flight thing. You probably just need a few more admin, <laughs> some admin help to just make sure stuff like that gets taken care of. For sure. For me, I had a pretty positive draft experience. So I was drafted to Seattle. Um, Those first rounders. And- we you know, that, it's big bucks. You know that it's TikTok awesome. filter where you like. Yeah, you know, refreshing my Twitter in my uh, college bedroom, just refresh. Um, no, I got a call from the owners, you know, within the hour of like, hey, we're excited to meet you. Look out for an email from so-and-so. Um, so from there, they were always in communication. If I had any questions, I had someone to talk to, yeah. I think. I would, they were very good at communication. Um, and my transition from college to professional was pretty smooth, but I think there were some things that obviously were looked over, but again, first year of the league going from college where everything is set up and T's are crossed, I's are dotted, everything like that to a brand new business of now we're, we're thrown in, I don't even know how many players came to camp, like 25, 30 players. Okay, what do we do? How do we get them here? And I think you would think problems like this would be a little bit more sorted out by this point. But hopefully this just slipped slipped through the cracks, as you said. But um, I'm not sure if we've actually heard anything from Kansas City. But I think they will definitely take this on the chin and make things better. Yeah, and you got it. It's a good – it is a good reminder for the entire league, like – just genuinely, like, whether people are signed or unsigned, like, treat people right. Super simple. <sighs> Thing two, okay. This is a tough one because it obviously, like, her World Cup, the Chicago, Chicago in their season, the impacts that Mal's injury has on, I, I mean, so many thing, things in the women's soccer space this year. It is, like, a horrible injury. It looked horrible, it like my heart broke you just the reaction from it, like just horrible. So I guess my question is, and I know everybody gets all riled up and this is a tough one. It's like, should, should the U S be playing Ireland right now? Should, you know what I mean? Like, is, is there someone to point a finger at or is this really just part of the game? And it's like the really hard swallow part of the game. I think there's kind of two parts to that or answer I guess so the first argument is everyone's saying oh she got hit five minutes before then take her off right everyone needs to realize Mal Q is in the one percent of of yeah. soccer players she wants to play she wants to compete and she, if she gets clear <clears throat> excuse me she wants to show that she's the best because she is one of the best yeah she probably wanted to go back on there. If she did it, she would have taken herself out, in my opinion. As yes. a former players, if I can't go, we'll pull ourselves out. And if it's like if it's a head issue and you don't get cleared, if you do the whole, you know, follow the hand, if you don't get cleared, you don't go back in. So the fact that like she got cleared, everybody decided it was in her best interest to get back. So I agree with you there. I don't think that that is like there's no one but to point a finger at thing. that. Yes. When I was like, she's injured. She should have come off the field. And I was like, she got cleared. Yeah. And like, then she, also that had nothing to do with somebody exactly. wrecking her plant foot. Exactly. So problem number two, I think it's a freak thing. I think she got, I she downshifted um, and got hit at the right spot. I mean, I think you knew it wasn't, anything else by the way she went down or the mechanism kind of thing. Um, I think for me, it broke my heart more because she was probably, if not the best player in the league at that moment in time. Nobody was scoring more goals, playing more consistently for a club or country club or country. So I think the U S is really, really, really going to miss her this world cup. It, and it there's going to be a bit like, first of all, Sophia Smith is going to like have to play beyond her years. And I know she is like, yeah. she is she capable? Yes. But now that like very clear front line has an opening. Like I think we all thought and knew it. Alex, Sophia, Mal, who's your starting three, those guys. So you have this opportunity for somebody to come in and step up and do it. And realistically, like 
that there is a lot of weight to carry because like there it's not a walk in the park. The World Cup is going to be very hard already for the US or anyone to win because it's so competitive. And to lose Mal, I do think that's huge. But I again I, I think it's the question of who's next now. And I agree with you. This happens every year. Men, women, it's the nature of the game. Injuries happen. They have to play together. So whether they're playing France or England or Trinidad or wh- whoever, right? It doesn't matter who they're playing. The team needs minutes together. And it, it, it sucks, but there is always one. Yeah. And if, and even if you take the Ireland game off the, off the schedule, they're still going to be doing inner squads. And they still go 100,000% yeah. because they're trying to make the team. And injuries so happen in the league. That, it matter. It doesn't matter that they were playing Ireland. Who cares? They could ease, That yeah. could have happened in training. It that could have happened anywhere. Yeah. That could happen in the NWSL. They have exactly. so many more games between now and then. Like, knock on wood, but like this, this is part of it, and it's could happen. It's probably going to happen to players from here, other country. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't going to be an isolated incident. So a huge bummer. Um, but again, the question mark will be: Is like, okay, who's gonna? Is it Trinity? Is it Lynn? Like, who who's this person that steps up and scores young? goals? Do they go more established? Do they go, you know, experienced? <sighs> For the World Cup, it's a big choice. I'm glad I'm not making that decision. Ooh, they were going to call and ask you, and now they're not. They were. I actually didn't pick up the phone. They were I actually going to listen to our podcast, and they were going to. Hey, what were, do you guys think? What do you, hey, Christine, Haley, what do you guys think? Um, let's go back to the league now got two games under knowing what we know game you are most excited for this weekend and I'm sure you don't have a bias because you never would I would never I have to go stick with stick with my dashers they're going away to Portland the most hostile environment in the league um I think the Dash have something to prove. They got a good win on the road against Chicago. Um, I think if they go there and you know what? I don't even want to finish that sentence because of what we did to Kansas City. Don't talk about so, it. Yeah. I'm excited for the Dashers versus Portland. Can I get, can I tell you something else besides the environment that Portland creates? Like one of the most I don't want to say it. Like not intimidating, but like something that just like sets you off your game a little bit about the environment in Portland is when you're all standing for the national anthem and you're like all like locked in and you're all serious and you're like, and you're staring one direction. And then all of a sudden, unbeknownst to you that it was even set up, a firework goes oh off. Oh my gosh. I mean, no. an they, absolute they, 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 shit your pants moment. Right before you're about to play. And I think their players are used to it. They're like, okay, and then here it comes. And they're like, oh, there it is. Everybody else, every other team's like sitting there. They've forgotten. I I have to change shorts <laughs> before the game because they've just, you know what I mean? I'm like, hit the deck. It, it's crazy. Like you can see all of our heart rates just go. <laughs> Everyone's like. <laughs> uh, yeah. This, and it's just it's the first, first um, inkling of in- intimidation. It is like you already have this crowd screaming at you and now you've been disarmed because again, you have to, you have to go to the locker room, pants change and come back okay. out. Yeah. So I, was, I yeah. thought you were talking about the thing. Oh, you know, you know, like you're kind of locked in. You're not really worried about that. I mean, it's truly offsetting. It is. To think that I, you're, you're, you're I, in the line of fire before a game. <laughs> one of my first games was at Portland. So I get it. I get the, hey, I need a timeout to go change my shorts and like pee for the thousandth time. 900th, yeah. So, yeah, look. Dashers, three points on the road. Heard it here first. I like that. I'm I'm excited about this uh, San Diego rain game. Besides Portland, San Diego, the only other 2-0 team in the league. Rain are coming off a road win. Even though... The rain lost their opener. I still think they're kind of sitting. They, they're looking like one of the better teams in the league again, kind of consistently. And I think that's going to be a good one. I'm 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 pretty excited to see how that one shakes out. I think again. I also think San Diego have like earned their wins. Not that like Portland and some of these other teams haven't earned them. Portland looks like it's easy right now. Portland looks like they're 
not to be disrespectful. Portland looks like sometimes they're playing against cones at moments during these games. I'm not calling anybody cones, but like that's how seem like they look like they're mid season, late season, and they're just doing passing patterns and they're slipping Sophia through and she's untouchable, like covered in oil or whatever, because she's so, I'm not like, not like in a, like she's just slippery. <laughs> you know what I mean? Slippery. She's this is slippery. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Like they look, and but I think San Diego is like truly building, and they're earning their goals, and they're playing good defense. They're threatening in the offensive zone. I, I'm, I'm, I think that's going to be a good one. I think we might get a draw here, to be honest. A very invigorating two-two tie. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I will say that the good, the, one of the best things about Seattle is they don't start the season too hot, too quick. So it's like they truly like mold their way into the season. Mm. So I feel like a 2-2 draw is a good call. But there's always – I mean, both teams have firepower. Yeah, so, they do. It's going to be a great game. Yeah. It's going to be a great game. Well, I'm pumped. We're back. We can jump back on our weekly cadence, <laughs> get it together. We're going to have some mics holding myself accountable for next week because i got to get it in the mail. Or I could just buy one, but, you know. I don't know why I'm so set on this, but I am. Fine. We will get the mics. We will eventually get mics. it'll be more legit if we do. It'll look really nice. It'll also not sound like we're both in tunnels. Maybe we are. Never know. We'll let that sit as we close out this show. We'll see you all next week. Yes. <laughs>